Hey guys, welcome to Cutting It Close. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you something that I learned about five years after I started CNC machining. And that was really how to properly insert and tighten my CNC bits to my spindle. They're very simple things, but it's things that they don't really tell you in other videos and the CNC bit companies don't tell you. So I'm gonna go over three things in today's video. One, how to properly insert your collet into your collet nut. Two, how to properly insert the bit into the collet. And three, and most importantly, how to properly tighten the bit inside the collet and the collet nut to your spindle or router or whatever you have. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a couple mistakes and go over a couple mistakes that I've done in the past that has broken quite a few bits. So with that being said, I'm gonna go with a close up of how to properly insert a, um, a collet into a collet nut and then go from there. So I hope this video is short, quick, to the point, but it should save you a lot of money. So one of the first things you wanna do um, is make sure that you snap your collet into your collet nut. Okay, you hear that snap? So if you do not snap it in there first, okay, it snaps in there, it doesn't fall out, and this is an ER20 collet. Um, if you have a regular router, this may not pertain to you at all. But if you have a spindle, make sure that this is getting snapped in there and then you insert your router bit after the fact, okay? You insert it after. If you were to take this and insert it into your collet and then insert it, it does not snap, okay? It cannot snap in place. And then what happens is this slips whenever you're routering out and causes um, this to have some lines that actually form on it, which in turn makes it off balance. And then realistically, it starts kind of doing this kind of thing whenever it's spinning and that's not good. So first and foremost, make sure that you are snapping your collet into your collet nut first. Tip number two is how to properly insert a bit into a collet and the wrong way to do it is not putting it in enough, correct? Or putting it in too much, okay? It should never, ever stick out the backside like this. I'll have a close up of how far it should go, but if the bit is long enough, it should not, it should stay about an eighth inch away from the back of this, or three millimeters. It should not go in any closer than that or any farther than that. It should stay about an eighth inch away from the back side. Um, that is because whenever this goes into your cone shape on your spindle, it helps it clamp. If it goes too far past, like this, it cannot help it clamp any because this is causing it to not be able to squeeze properly and you router bad. Now, if you have a small bit like this that you know can't possibly go in all the way, so if it goes in all the way, right, you can't, it, it's not, that's okay. There's usually typically markings on these bits and you just put it in you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then it's okay. I think this bit, it's stopping about right here right now, and that's okay. So if you have a shorter bit, just know it's, you know, you don't have to insert it to where it's an eighth inch away from the end or three millimeters, that's okay. Just insert it with what you feel comfortable with on the bit, and the clamping should work fine. But on bits like this, this bit, you know, be sure to only insert it to where it is an eighth inch away from this backside, and you're fine. I, I, I get asked this a lot, how far do you insert the bit? Well, you never want to insert the bit farther um, where these, these flutes are actually inside of this collet, okay? See how this flute is inside the collet? That's very bad. You want to insert it to about a sixteenth of an inch or just one and a half millimeters outside where this blade is not inside of this collet. That is a proper way to do it. Um, if it's inside of it, the bit's gonna break. Obviously, it's gonna stick out the back. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna be sure. And and see, this bit, as far as it can go in, is right there. And you know, it's not uh, three millimeters, an eighth inch away. It's about a quarter inch or six millimeters, but that's okay because this is not inside of that collet. So this is gonna help improve the life of the bit and improve your cut. Another thing to look for, when I was first starting out, I did not know, 
is that this collet eventually is going to get some really, if it gets deep scratches in it, technically it's going to wobble inside that spindle and that's very bad. So if your collet has any deep scratches, that means this collet was spinning without being properly tightened down. It was spinning with the bit and so it forms scratches right here. If it has scratches all the way around, then throw that away. It's now a bad collet and you need to get yourself a new one. That's something that seems costly, but I promise you it'll improve your bit life and improve your cuts. So if that collet has some lines around it, this one's starting to get scratches because um, it's been used a lot. It gets used 40 hours a week. Um, you need It's time to get yourself a new collet. So that's another thing to look for. Once again, I hope these two things helped. So tip number three is how to properly tighten everything to your spindle. So how you've been taught in the past um, is now you have this right, you get your put your bit in there, you have it, you're so, so far away, your eighth inch or three millimeters from the end, you put it on there, you get it hand tight, right? And then you take your two wrenches, correct? And then you tighten it up till it gets pretty tight where your hands can close together, correct? or you give it a little nudge, right? That way works until you start dealing with longer bits. So that way works with engraving bits, but when you start dealing with longer bits like this, um, or a 3 8 bit or a half inch bit, that tightness does not work, okay? So what you have to do is actually use a torque wrench, okay? So a prime example is that each collet that we're using, okay? So this is an ER20 collet. This is an ER32 collet, okay? I use this ER32 collet on my uh, bigger CNC that I have, but most CNCs are gonna have an ER20, ER10, etc. right? Well, each of these collets need to be tightened to a certain torque to properly work. Um, so I would advise getting a torque wrench, okay? Some form of a torque wrench, um, an ER20 collet needs to be at 50 pound feet uh, for our standard guys, and I think that's 70 newtons per meter um, for my metric guys out there. This ER32 collet needs to be tightened to, I think, 100 pound feet, and let me look what that is on newtons per meter. So that is about... 135 newtons per meter that these bits need to be properly tightened at. So what I do is I will once again properly snap it in there first, make sure this is all the way in, tighten it up, okay, and then set your wrench, and this is my torque wrench for my other CNC, but set your wrench, get it, and tighten it till the torque wrench clicks. And that is actually how you properly set a bit in here. You'll notice a huge difference in um, all your cutting, um, in your bit life, etc. when you tighten something in there properly. It will seem like you're overly tightening it, but I promise you, you're not. It, it, there's gonna be a big difference. Um, now each, like I said, each collet, either ER32, ER20, ER40, ER50, ER10, they're gonna have different pound feet requirements or newtons per meter requirements. Um, I'm gonna show a little chart on that, um, just as a picture so you can see. But that's something that I've never been told and that has helped my spindle out tremendously. So I hope, I hope tips one, two, and three helped you a lot and will improve this bit's life and this baby's life. Thanks for watching. So guys, I hope those three things helped you out a lot. They're very simple, they're not hard to do, but they are going to save you a lot of time and money because your cuts are gonna to start to look better and I promise you there's gonna be immediate results you'll see or, or you'll hear on your CNC. So, I hope you left this video with more knowledge than what you started it with and if you need anything else from me, please leave that in the comments in the comment section below. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much and have a great day.